from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Oh, it's you. Hiya, Sergeant. Headquarters just gave me this number to call. I was wondering who'd be in Barney Slade's apartment. How'd you get in? With a key. Brother Pocket had it. Give me that again? Jarvis Pocket. He's one of the men on that hunting trip with Tom Sanford 27 years ago. He's here with me now. How'd he get it, the key? Barney had given it to him a few years back. He's known all along that Barney Slade and Tom Sanford were one and the same. He also knows the name of the man who tried to kill Sanford. Who was it? Name was Joe Fallon. At one time, he'd been Mavis Gale's private chauffeur. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Ocean Park, California. To State Unity Life, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Silent Queen matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Locating Brother Jarvis Pocket, who now ran a rescue mission along L.A.'s Skid Row, had been the only real break I'd had in the case so far. At least I hoped it would be. The one-time field director of the silent era had often visited with his old friend Tom Sanford, alias Barney Slade, might put us on the track of Slade's killer. I watched Brother Pocket as he paced back and forth across the small room, scratching his chin thoughtfully, glancing up at the blank spaces on the wall where the photographs had been. He was still pacing the room when Sergeant McKay arrived. How about it, Mr. Pocket? As I told Mr. Dollar, Sergeant, I'm positive that this entire wall was covered with photographs. Uh Uh-huh. And now there are several missing... Were they photographs of some particular star? Oh, no, no. Action shots made during the filming of a picture that I directed for Miss Gale. Let me see, what was the title of that one? Oh, maybe that isn't important, Brother Pocket. Oh, Who wait, was... wait a moment. I, 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 yes, uh, it was called Dangerous Little... No, Dangerous Lovers. Yeah. <laughs> that George Sheldon starred with Mavis in that one. Was Tom Sanford in it, too? Uh, oh, Tom, yes. Best role he ever had. How about the next row of pictures? Mm, yes, well, uh, a photograph of Mavis and Tom, I believe. I can't recall the title of that film, a dreadful thing. Francis Trevelyan talked them into it and directed it, too. It should have stayed behind the camera where it belonged. And the bottom row, were they photographs of Tom Sanford and Mavis Gale? Uh, yes, yes, I'm certain of it. Uh, that picture was... Brother uh, Pocket, uh, would you say that Tom had changed much since those photographs were made? Well, not too much, no. He put on a bit of weight... Hair turned gray, of course, thinning on top. Or oh, it'd grown a small mustache, too. How about it, Sergeant? You'll notice there isn't another photograph of Tom Sanford left on that wall. Okay. So assuming the killer took these away because they might identify Barney as Tom Sanford... And link him with Mavis Gale? Yes. Yet the killer went to the trouble of drawing red question marks over the other photographs of Mavis Gale. To deliberately draw attention to her. Why? Mavis Gale would have been involved anyway to a certain extent. After all, she is the beneficiary of Slade's insurance policy. Sure, sure. But suppose the killer wasn't aware of that. Uh, $25,000, I believe, is the amount. Yeah, that's right. And you're wondering why he did it. Oh, I can make a guess. You said he'd been pretty reckless, tossed a lot of Mavis Gale's money around in the old days. May have amounted to something close to $25,000. Possibly. This may have been his way of squaring the account. $25,000 and a... King size shock. He could hardly be expected to guess that his death would come about under these circumstances, Mr. Dollar. No, no, but he could have passed away calmly in his sleep some night and it wouldn't have changed a thing, Brother Pocket. Mavis Gale would still have been curious about a man named Barney oh, Slade. Yes, I suppose, yes. He must have been pretty sure she'd recognize him, that it would make a nice big splash in all the papers. Was he that much of a ham? Tom, uh, I'm afraid so. He couldn't have loved Mavis Gale very Oh, he, Mr. Dolly, right to the last, yes. Still, he couldn't resist the magnificent gesture, the big payoff, returning her 25000 You know something, Dollar? Now you sound like you're on her side. <sighs> yeah. Well, uh, gentlemen, if that's all that you want me for, I think I'd, I'd best be getting back to my quarters at the mission. The flock may be getting a little restless, huh? <laughs> you know how it is. There are times that 
one of the brothers will sneak a bottle of sherry into the dormitory and things become quite gay. <laughs> sure, Mr. Pocket. You can run along and uh, thanks. Well, good night, gentlemen. Good night. Well, Sergeant, what's the next move? What about this Joe Fallon? You said he'd been Mavis Gale's chauffeur at one time. Yeah. Pocket saw the whole thing. The attempt to kill Tom Sanford 27 years ago. Fallon and Sanford were struggling. A shot went off and Fallon got it full in the face. Sanford then decided to play dead. Yep. But ever since then, Sanford was hiding out down here under the name of Barney Slade. That is, until somebody caught up to him, caught on to it three nights ago and killed him. Big question still remains, who? Come on, let's get out of here. I'll get it. Yeah? Uh-huh. Right, I got it. That was headquarters. They just got a call from Francis Trevelyan. Trevelyan? He was one of the men on that hunting trip, along with Pocket and the others. Yeah. Seems Mavis Gale just heard we've been warning to ask her some questions. She wants us to come right over. She's at Trevelyan's beach house in Malibu. The beach house turned out to be one of those super modern jobs, low, sprawling, with a lot of glass and flagstone. The butler allowed us through the front door, and after a nice little stroll, we finally arrived at the den, a 50-footer at least, with a bar at one end. Mavis and a tall, distinguished-looking gentleman were at the other. Evening, Miss Gale. Good evening, Sergeant. I'm terribly sorry about all this. I didn't know you wanted to talk with me. I should have left word at the house, I suppose. But I was so upset, anxious to get away. I understand. Oh, this is Francis Trevelyan, Sergeant McKay and Mr... Dollar. We met at the funeral home. Oh, yes, I... I remember. Uh, do sit down, gentlemen. May I offer you a drink? No, thanks, Mr. Trevelyan. Now, Miss Gale. Yes, when I first informed you of Barney Slade's death at the Penny Arcade at Ocean Park, you told me you never met the man. That's right. I had no way of knowing it was Tom. Not until last night when I went to the mortuary. Had you ever been in or near the Penny Arcade at any time, Miss Gale, previous to the murder? Yes. Two nights before. Why didn't you mention this to me when I spoke with you before? I don't know. I was frightened. A man named Barney Slade had been murdered. The killer had drawn question marks on my photographs in the dead man's apartment. I... Were you afraid to tell me because it would involve you deeper? Yes. I think that was the purpose of the phone call, Sergeant. What phone call? That evening, shortly after six, I received a call from a man. He wouldn't identify himself. He said that a very dear, very old friend of mine was in trouble and needed my help. He instructed you to go to the arcade in Ocean Park? I was to be there by 8 o'clock, and this old friend was to make himself known to me. So you went. Did you see anyone? No one that I recognized. Miss Gale, does the name Joe Fallon mean anything to you? Fallon? Why do you ask that? Just a moment, Mr. Trevelyan. Why, yes. Joe was my chauffeur many, many years ago. And when did you discharge him? Shortly after my marriage to... To Tom. Did he tell you to get rid of Fallon? Yes. Yes, he didn't like Joe. Uh, Mr. Dollar, may I ask you why you're questioning Miss Gale about Joe Fallon? Because we just found out he's the man who tried to murder Tom Sanford 27 years ago. What? You mean he was the man killed? The man we all thought was Tom. That's right. Was Joe Fallon in love with you? Uh, now, see here. Better answer. Was he Miss Gale? I... I... I don't know. What are you two driving at, Sergeant? I, I insist on knowing. And I'd like to know why you jump when I first mentioned Joe Fallon's name, Mr. Trevelyan. All right, all right, I'll tell you. You see, I'd, I, I'd quite forgotten about him. It was only when you asked Miss Gale that it, it suddenly dawned on me who he was, and it, it startled me, because his name had been brought to my attention only some 24 hours ago. Oh. A, a phone call. A man who said he was in partnership with Joe Fallon. They had a business deal to talk over with me. And? Well, I simply told them that I wasn't interested. I was in the midst of my most important production, and I just couldn't be bothered. Did you receive a similar call, Miss Gale? I know. You know, Sergeant, I'll give you odds. It's the same one who called Miss Gale before the murder to get her down to the Penny Arcade. But I don't understand. Why? Who is the man? 
When we find that out, Miss Gale, we'll have the killer. Here's your hotel, Dollar. Oh, yeah, right, thanks. Been a long day, hasn't it? Sure has. And we haven't made much progress. At least Brother Pocket was some help. Uh Uh-huh. Cigarette? Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, Pocket gave us a couple of answers. We could sure use a lot more. Thanks. You know, Sergeant, that bit about the photograph still bothers me. Why would the killer first try to hide the link between Mavis Gale and Tom Sanford and then deliberately draw attention to her? You think someone beside the killer could have made those question marks on her photographs? Could be. Okay. For instance... Who discovered the body? Twyla James. Okay. You mean she walks in, discovers the body, picks up red crayon, does the art job? Why? Well, look, I just make these things up. I don't explain them. (laughs) You're off the beam on this one, Johnny. When we got to Barney's place, she was shaking like a ship without a rudder. No, she was scared silly. Uh Uh-huh. I'd still like to ask her about it, though. Better get some sleep, Dollar. I guess. Thanks for the lift, Sergeant. Night. Yeah, the sergeant was probably right about Twyla. But I sauntered on down to the amusement zone anyway. It was late and the place was folding up. There was a nice warm breeze blowing in from the sea and the night was calm. So I continued along the ocean front, crossed over into Venice and kept right on going. The old canals and the bridges looked more sad and forlorn than ever in the pale moonlight, with the sea in the background adding its lonely rhythm of sound. The shot had come from somewhere over by the canals. Then I saw the man on the bridge staggering, weaving like a drunk. I headed toward him on the double. But before I could reach him, he stumbled and fell on his face. Here. Let's see how... Pocket. There. Back there. Pocket, this is Dollar. Johnny Dollar. There. Over there. He kept pointing across the canal, and then I saw the figure slinging away. I took after him. I scrambled across the bridge. And then along the canal... And then I lost him. I pulled up on the bank of the canal, looking around. Listen. Nothing. Then, suddenly, something. Footsteps behind me. But I heard them a second too late. Oh! Now, here's our star to tell you about the final episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a man who talked too much, and it killed him. Yeah, the payoff. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Adrian John Doe, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.